Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for still being here. I know that you don't come for a conference to see an online presentation, but I promise this is at least not a recording video. I'm here live. And to do that, like, I, I want to prove that I'm here. I want to, to have some feedback. So please, if you have your phone with you, please scan this, this QR code. I want to, to have some, some interaction with you. So I'm Diogo Pacheco. I'm from University of Exeter. And I'm going to present my, my paper about, like, uh, politics and sorry politics in brazil so i want to start like even going before i'm assuming you cannot you cannot hear the video right but that doesn't make much difference so i want you to guess what's going on here this is from i won't say the, the year because otherwise i can i can give you some some hints but i want you to to think what what was going on here so was that like a, a celebration of the World Cup? You know, Brazilians are very passionate about football. Or maybe it was a celebration of a, a goal that was cancelled by VAR. Or maybe they would just celebrate like the future of, because politics now is even more popular than, than football, believe me. Or it's just like a prison of a uh, Supreme Court judge that might be interfering in the election. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Come on. It's, no, come on. All, all, all possible at the same level? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the answer right now. So that was not a celebration of a goal. So that was a, the celebration of a prison of the judge from the Supreme Court, the one responsible for the, the, the election. But the funny thing, or the more impro impressive thing, is that like this prison never happened. It was a totally fake news. Someone said a message spread in the, the WhatsApp groups, and then people that were protesting on the streets start like celebrate. So that's the, the most amazing uh, and absurd thing that was happening. This is just to, to exemplify for you the level of, of the crisis that we'll be living in Brazil. So Brazil is, is right now in a, in a very weird situation. So since 2018, we've been uh, having our most fierce and contested election. So we have like murder attempts, we have like candidates being put in jail before the election so that they could not participate on, on the election itself. We have like the election of the far right, Jair Bolsonaro. We have COVID and then all the controversies around COVID and vaccination, not vaccination and lockdown. And then eventually the candidate was released and they kind of, they tried to, 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 to run the second election and the left wing Lula then was put in power. So he joined the the, the, the the government again, and then you have like all those those uh, contests about the election being stolen, similar to what we have in, in the US, and then you have a, a coup attempt and people trying to, to, to break down everything. So it's a mess, right? But the only good thing, if there is any good thing on, on, on this on this scenario, is that I've managed to be collecting data throughout this entire period. So we have we have like a lot of data, and this might be useful. For us to, to do a lot of study and understand what's going on. So what's the data look like? And just to give you a little bit of context, so we are talking about Brazil politics, even though we have tweets from everywhere, like from many different countries, there is a bias, clear bias, because the way we construct from Brazil, right? So the, the Brazilian politics system is a multi-partisan one, so we have more than 30 parties, and as you can see, I think you can see my, 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 my mouse, right? So most of these parties, you have like some numbers there. And why you, why number is so important in Brazilian politics? Vote is first, vote is mandatory there after 18, so you are obliged to, to vote. And the vote is electronic. So you go to electronic booths and you choose a number. So every candidate has a number. So that's how you choose, how you, you choose, you, you cast your vote. Every party has a number. So sometimes you can vote directly on, on the party instead of a specific individual. So that's how we start tracking our, our, our data. So we start in August, September, in August of 2018. And I was tracking like all the, the candidates to the presidency at that time. And for each candidate, I tracked like three, three, basically three items. So the first one, their name, their official account, so everything that they mention or they are, they are, they are posting, and also the official hashtag. The official hashtag usually are the last name and the number that you used to vote. So that's what we, we've been tracking. And also we were tracking like the Supreme Court related to, to the election. And we did this since 2018. 
and eventually in 2022, like June, July, they change for the next uh, election cycle. So you can see like most of the candidates remain and we update with the new ones. But also in addition to the candidates, I started tracking like the, the parties, like the 30 something parties. So basically that's what we were tracking. And we managed to get like a massive, a massive data set of almost half a billion tweets. It's a lot from 13 million accounts. And this is all available to you. Of course, not everything is available there, but I, I have available and, and like there is a, a smaller version of the data set available there. And you can see like in this timeline, you can clearly see that the, the, we managed to capture very much what's going on in the Brazilian politics. You can see like major peaks during the, the two election cycles. So number one is, was the 2018 election when Bolsonaro wins. And the number seven is the, the most recent one when Lula got back to power. And of course you can see like peaks with, with every event when someone is saying some nonsense thing here and there. And you can also see that there was a, a huge uh, traffic during, during the COVID year as well, especially during the first wave. So this is, this is the, the, the collection we, we were collecting using like the, the stream API and it, it was active mostly the entire period. We have like 94% of the days captured there. <clears throat> so what does the find? Of course, you know, from the, uh, you are familiar with Twitter. Twitter has uh, basically four types of messages. You have original tweets, you have like replies or comments. You can have like quotes when you just add comments to someone else's tweets, or you can have retweet. And just to give an overview in our data set, and I think most of the case, what you see is something like that. Like the majority, the vast majority of the message will be just retweets up here. And the lowest that you have is just like the original tweets. But you can clearly see here there is a, a trend, at least in, in this Brazilian data set, that the numbers of replies likely increasing throughout the years. We, this was about the message, but what about the users? Like I have like this 13 million users, 17 million users, I don't remember anymore. And I was thinking, okay, when these users were created, how old are they? Old in terms of Twitter account. And if you can see here, like the data collection start on this, this green, green line here, so 2000. 18, and we collect from here until they, they shut down the, 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 the API, right? But the users that were engaged in this participation, they were born, Twitter born everywhere, right? Like since the beginning of Twitter, there's a, a still a, a few accounts that were created even before Twitter was created. So that's a, a side note, if you can, if we can discuss that later on. But what, what's more impressive here that, so imagine every, every Twitter user has a create date and I count like, okay, this was created in day one, like they created on, on May 15. So I just count the number of tweets, accounts created in the same day. And you can see like huge, huge spike in a few days. And they, this is just raised a lot of suspicion like for instance, this day here, we have more than 20,000 accounts created in the same day. And all those 20,000 accounts was engaged in somehow in some day in this, in this data set. So this raised a lot of suspicion. So you might ask, this might be bots, right? So we apply, we use bottom media light, a scalable <clears throat> uh, tool to help us to, to identify bots. And that's not the best way, but we know a lot of issues that you have, but you can set a threshold and see, okay, how many bots we have above this threshold. So bottom media light will give you a, a score. Zero means that you're more likely to be a human and one will be more likely to be a bot. So if you set the threshold, for instance, at 0.5, you can see like there is like 15% of bot, but the, the funny thing is like, if you do analysis like this, you can see that the numbers of bot is slightly stable. You see like there is a, a huge uh, a peak during COVID year and a huge peak like in the second year, uh, in the second election, especially after the election. So this was the pre, pre coup attempt. But what is, what is more interesting to see is instead of setting a threshold every every tweet has a, a user associate so this user can have like a bot score so i can some in some sense have a bot score associated to a message so imagine that i can get the average bot score of all messages in a day and if i do that and i plot just the average message throughout the day what you can see is a different thing the, the, the numbers of bot might be the same or roughly the same throughout the data set 
but the engagement of this bot is escalating. Like since 2018, it's just going up and up and up and up. So this is very, very uh, alarming, surprising at some sense, because we imagine that the, the bot detections are, are evolving, like their actions from the platforms are evolving, they are canceling, they are blocking more. But in reality, we are engaged with more, way more message from bots than ever. So how these bots are engaging, and I already show in the, the types of, of message that we see. And we found like a very, very strong correlation with number of replies, at least in our data set, as we increase the number of replies, we increase the, 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 the bot score of, of the message. As Luca mentioned early on, it's not only about bots, but what about coordination? So, and we had a paper a few years ago showing <clears throat> like some, some uh, framework to capture coordination. And I'm glad that he showed a different example. So this example I'm showing here is about finding suspicious users. So imagine every dot here is a, is a user on Twitter and they, if they share the screen, they measure at some point I'm user one and then you are user two and then we switch the, this, this, this handle. So that's a very suspicious, uh, suspicious uh, behavior by definition. And we connect them and we look this throughout the years and we are able to like split the components. So each component per C is a group of suspicious users. And you can see here is just like I am filtering them, and all you can see here is are groups that share more than ten names or that tweet more than ten times, ten thousand tweets. So they are a very prolific one, and every one of this group has their own history about. So we didn't investigate all of this. There is still a lot of work to do later on. So just to 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 summarize what we we've been doing so far. We need to be careful with the challenge with bot detection, even though we are expanding, we are doing better and better. We can see that reality is, is far from, from, from good. We are still a lot of challenge and we need to improve way more. To the evolution is directly related to that because now we have fewer, fewer data. They have more access to, to, to posting, but not to rating. So these are a challenge. And what we, we doing here, it's not restricted to Twitter, to X. This might be applied to any other, other, other platform. Also, this is just the first analysis of this massive data set. I, I, I think I open more questions than I answer. So for all those analysis, there are multiple open questions that I still need to address. And of course, one of those is to find universal patterns. We know that's very hard and what we see might be so uh, related to cultural norm, like maybe bots are uh, replying more just in Brazil. No, no, is that's the way they behave. So one way to extend this research to to extend to other regions and other platform, and that's the importance of of continued research and collaboration. So that's why I, 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 I my main goal is to make this this data set uh, open to everyone, and I hope we can collaborate. Thank you so much for your attention.